Hey guys, so we got some really good response on the last video, especially here from Jake. Jake, it's always a real pleasure to see you and also when you comment. So, you know, everyone, for everyone who's watching, Jake has been around since the early days of this channel. He's been one of the people who has kind of kept me going, kept me posting videos. It's really good to see, you know, such constructive comments. And the channel does get really good comments. Also, you know, somebody here has pointed out, uh, Eth has pointed out that you know, it's been a while since the last video. Very quickly, that's literally just because of work and also developing some of the algorithms that I wanted to play with. So it's just one of those things. I only like to post videos when I have something of value, which again, today I'm going to post because I thought it would be better to answer Jake's question directly. So, you know, Jake saying, you know, do you think we would see some slippage um, when placing the trades uh, with, with, you know, actual fills, etc.? And also, have I put any real money into this machine learning, uh, into the strategy right now? And he's also talking about, you know, credit spreads for the uh, S&P. So uh, I, th I think that's who you mean with SPX, Jake. I'm pretty sure you mean uh, the S&P 500 and we'll use the SPY ticker for the ETF when playing with the data here. Um, but yeah, no, definitely. And great to hear from you as well. In fact, it, it actually inspired me to do a video really quick. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, to answer your question first, you know, in terms of putting money in for this uh, right now, I haven't. And in fact, I've also taken all my money out of crypto right now. So, you know, there's various reasons for that at the moment, but I'm really not actively trading at all. Um, I'm much more in a learning phase at the moment, you know, looking for edge and it's, it's really what I enjoy. So, you know, my, my income actually comes from managing an analytics team in a large company. So, you know, I don't earn my living from trading. I'm, I'm not a trader. Um, but I like to find the edge and I love to do the, you know, the development, etc. Uh, I will be putting real money in at some point when I'm ready to put my money back into investing and saving on a regular basis. And how I do that will be very much like you in terms of credit and debit spreads, uh, using options, etc. I think that, you know, this this for me is the most sensible way to go, because I think you can have an edge already just taking into account implied volatility. So, so I hope those answer those two questions. Uh, Jake, what I want to do very quickly is answer your other question, you know, um, how can we make money here from, you know, the S&P? So I want to show you something if you're trading options that you might want to think about. So the first thing is I've got no data here right now. So, you know, let's just go and pull for the S&P uh, 500. I'm going to just pull two years of data right now because we're going to run back testing. And, you know, I want to show you how that looks on the back testing. So I'm going to pull that daily data over two years. And I'm going to call this SPY uh, two, two year or something like that, right? Just so we know this is the two year data. And then to run for the machine learning model, I'm actually going to run a separate data set. So I'm going to pull S&P 500 data, you know, for um, the last forever, for as far as back as it'll go, and I'll pull daily data. So this is going back to like the year 2000 or whatever. Um, here, I'm going to just call this, you know, large. Some, whatever. It's just I just name the files in a way that, you know, helps me to, to understand what we're working with. So I think the first thing is let's go over here and look at this large data set. Let's first look at the machine learning. And, you know, if you're looking at things like the S&P 500, right, um, you mentioned your friend is having a lot of success there, dying to hear what, what they're doing. I mean, the S&P 500 is, you know, it's pretty tough to crack <laughs> because it's so liquid. And I know there are people out there who are, you know, they're doing well. Uh, with the data science side on the S&P, etc. So really good to hear. Tell your friend, you know, Sean from Crypto Wizards says, cool, um, you know, that's awesome. I don't have very, anything very good from a machine learning perspective for the S&P. Like the most I've been able to draw out is like a 1% edge on a machine learning perspective. But I do want to show you on backtesting how, you know, you can find profitable strategies to really up your win rate. But the first thing I want to do quickly is I'm just going to pull some, you know, just very quickly things like what we did before in the last video, you know, the daily log returns. I'm going to add in, you know, RSI. Um, we could add in any of these. I mean, to me, they're all pretty much the same thing in terms of they're just technical indicators, right? So let's add in VWAP, which apparently is better for intraday trading. Uh, volatility, Bollinger Bands, whatever, right? We can add anything and everything. And then in terms of the toolbox here, what I'm going to do is just add the sequence of events as well so that we have that all going back, you know, one day. So let's just add in all of this and say, okay, you know, 
don't only you factor this in in this row of data, but also factor in yesterday's data. So, you know, time step one, if I put five, it would take five days worth. Um, let's, let's predict the close price because it makes the most sense, right? If you're looking to predict a day into the future uh, for machine learning, let's predict the close. And I have tested this predicting 10 days into the future, etc. And the honest answer is, you know, I've not found anything for the S&P that's really worth spending a significant amount of time on. I've actually run, I was going to do a video on conditional probability for trading because, um, you know, there's from Tasty Trade, there's a really good video on this. It inspired me and I've written a whole algorithm here in Python. I'm happy to share that lets you put in conditional probability rules. And even then, like even then, you're not, it's not doing great. So I'm going to show this to you now. So let's run the machine learning here on the large data set and, and see how that comes out. So we're going to predict this outcome column of tomorrow. And here I'm going to select, you know, uh, I'm going to unselect actually anything which is not useful. So I'm going to select all of that data. And, you know, I don't care what it uh, spits back in Excel. 10% of the data set is fine. And let's just run that and see what happens. So, you know, really, we're better than 50-50. But the market typically goes up 53%, right? So if I just picked up days all the time, and this is priced into the options, you know, typically, technically there, I'm actually losing. So here it's it's predicting the accuracy of the update. So, so interestingly enough, what the machine learning model is saying about the S&P, when you look at its price, and maybe it's moving average <laughs> in the last time step was a useful indicator, it doesn't really matter. Um, you, you know, there, there's really no memory in the S&P from that perspective. So, so this is kind of interesting, you know, I wouldn't use this as a strategy. And in fact, if I if I looked at the Python code, I, I could get a 54% win rate um, with machine learning based stuff and conditional probability, which I think is really good anyway, because that beats that typically beats it by 1% that beats the market by 1% in terms of what's priced in. And that is enough to ensure long term profit, right? As long as when you're when you're placing your options trade, the important thing is the price you're paying for those options. So, you know, for example, I think it's Think or Swim has this, but so we don't have it in the UK, but you can see the delta and you can work out what price you should pay for that. And Option Alpha actually has a very good video on that uh, as well. So, you know, that in itself, if you're doing that well um, and you've got a 1% edge, you're pretty much over time, right? The odds are in your favor, you've, you've become the casino. But, you know, in terms of now upping the win rate, because this is really what matters, Let's actually go and back test two years worth of data. So I'm just going to take our you know, S&P two year data here. And in fact, I'm just going to add some moving averages to it very quickly. So let's take the, the S&P for two years and add you know, some moving averages um, just because I'm going to back test a typical strategy like moving average relative to price, you know, something really basic. And literally, I just made it up just before doing this video to see, yep, it worked and you know, it's worth showing you. So if I take, um, for example, the trend, simple moving average, I'm going to add in maybe a 12 day moving average, I think I tried it with, and then also a uh, 21 day moving average, just because that's what everyone talks about, the 21 moving day average, day moving average, blah, blah, blah. And then back trader, uh, let's go and actually pull that data set. So this is the two year data set. And now we're going to do some things, right? We, we're going to do a little bit more than we did in the last video when it comes to going back and seeing how much money we would have made. We're going to, we're going to plug in more in the strategy. So what I want to say here is, you know, if the 21 moving day average in the current time period, so no, you know, not looking back any further days in the, in the current time period is, you know, relative to the close, it's actually uh, let me think about this. It's actually above the close. And that's for also the same time period. So if the 21 moving day average is above the close, I'm going to say, you know, go long, just a really straightforward strategy. And I'm going to scroll down again, because whenever you add something, it adds it to the list of conditions and assumes you you're ready to make some trades. So I'm just going to scroll down again, and add some other conditions. In the last video, we used this section to automatically close a trade in the next day. I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to say do that. And I want to close the long. So now I'm going to select the conditions to close the long when it's less than or equal to the close, right? So now I've got an extra condition here. I've got two conditions, one for long, uh, going long, and one for closing my position. So it will only close the long when that 
position is, is met. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to go short. So I'm going to sell short at that same condition, right? If the 21 moving day average is less than or equal to the close, uh, then essentially what I'm going to do is go short. And I'm going to close that short if it's greater than. So those are my conditions. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, for this argument as well, again, we're going to trade based on the close price, same as last time. I'm going to remove, you know, all of the costs for now. And I'm going to put in 100% of my uh, capital as trade. And, you know, this could be the trading capital, right? So this could be X percent of my total portfolio. It doesn't matter right now. And place one trade at a time. And to stop trading if we hit 20% of our account balance. So let's do that. Let's have a look at what backtesting, you know, a simple strategy looking at close versus moving average actually would have provided. And remember, the important thing here is I'm going long and I'm going short. So I'm actually doing two things there. I'm going long and I'm going short, meaning, you know, I've kind of got a neutral strategy in terms of it doesn't matter what the market's doing, whether it's going up or down. It's actually if the market's going sideways that I have a problem, I think, with a strategy like this. But nonetheless, that's how it's looking. So one of the things I just want to caution people on is just be careful of this partial autocorrelation here right now. Uh, it's using day data, not return data at the moment. I've just been uh, updating some things. So just, you know, you don't need to take this too seriously right now as I'm recording this video. But look, look here, you can see we lost money, right? Um, so if we had actually traded this, even with our transaction costs, we lost money. But look at look at what's more important here. It has a 69 percent win uh, win to loss or, or uh, win percentage ratio. So out of all the trades, 69 percent of these were correct. Uh, and so that that's something that's really worth paying attention to. You can see here where it placed the long trades and, you know, where it placed the short trades over here. So there's not loads of trades. And the thing with options trading as well is you want lots of small profits. That's how you lead to, you know, success, I think, in, in the options side. But the win ratio is right up there. So without using machine learning, we've actually been able to see that a simple where is the price versus the 21 moving day average over the last two years, you know, um, would have been really successful. Now, in terms of the trades, in terms of going long and closing short, etc., none of this is relevant to me because if I was trading this with options, right, my profits would be very different. And so what you want to do is, you know, you, you want to decide, I guess, and, and you probably know more than I do, you probably know this all already. Um, you know, when you're, when you're doing a credit or a debit spread, it depends on where the implied volatility is. So if implied volatility is really high, you want to be on the net selling side. But when implied volatility is very low, you want to be on the net buying side, if that makes sense. Even though you're selling, you, even though you're trading a debit or a credit spread, how you enter and what position and what side of that you take depends on, you know, where the implied volatility is. Uh, definitely let me know if um, you feel that that should be that should be covered in, in a video. So I'm not interested in these results because, you know, from an options trading perspective, this win ratio is extremely important. It's very useful. And so, you know, what you can do is explore lots of different techniques that might work um, through backtesting just to see what are the techniques that have the greater win ratio. And then what you can do is create an ensemble of those rules. So do those rules line up on a particular day? You know, so, th so the ensemble of all the strategies, do they add up the, the aggregate of all of that? Do they add up to a profit? And if they do, then probably you've got a really good idea there. Now, one of the things I have to say as a disclaimer is if you follow this advice and Jake, I know you know this, but just for anyone watching the video, you know, I'm not a trader. I'm not qualified to give you advice on trading. Right. I, I never have been and I shouldn't give you advice on training on trading. All I can do is explain to you how I think about, you know, the markets and what would be a sensible approach to thinking about, you know, trading. What this proves as well is that, you know, moving averages relative to close don't make you money buying and shorting. <laughs> they don't. Moving average crossovers, you could actually do this. You could actually change the conditions here for the moving average relative to the other moving average and put, you know, a strategy for moving average crossovers in or MACD or whatever you want, Bollinger Bands. Um, but, you know, here for me, the moving average simplicity here just to just to trade it really, it doesn't work. So that's that's potentially how you want to look at it from a machine learning perspective. If you are going to look at the S&P, 
one of the things I've, I've done in the past and not to a large degree is, you know, in the data builder also brought in through the general data and, and you just use the Yahoo Finance tickers, whatever Yahoo Finance use for this, like 10 year treasury bonds, etc. Because the bond market and the, you know, the financial markets are very, um, <laughs> they, they should be like inversely correlated uh, to a degree. And you can actually see, you know, using the Z-score tool here, by the way, I should point out, you could run the S&P, for example, against Bitcoin, that's already set up like daily data over the last year. You can actually run this and it will tell you how correlated they've been over the last year, right? If I run it over the last three months, for example, 63% correlation, right? So we haven't talked about this new Z-score version tool yet, but this is actually really cool because it, it pre-searches for co-integrated pairs. Um, and one of the things I can do is check out anything which it's highlighting in red or green and see if it looks, if it looks interesting. So once I click on it, it pops up here and I search it and it'll actually compare those two assets. So it tells me the correlation is, is pretty poor but the co-integration is really strong, like really strong. And what that means is the price differences of these are, are often crossing. So you can see that by the spread here. Um, I definitely recommend, and I, I do wanna do videos on this, like learn about, you know, learn about the hedge ratio, learn about co-integration, learn about pairs trading, because this does all that analysis for you for crypto. And it literally shows like when, um, where the Z-score is in terms of the differences between this. And because they're so heavily uh, co-integrated, their prices converge and cross over often, meaning you can go long on one and short on the other and constantly trade that gap rather than trying to predict direction. So that's what this tool is for. Um, but you can use it to see how correlated things are and you can do it with general data. So for example, if I look at the S&P 500 versus the NASDAQ, so, so the spiders or the, the Qs, right? Um, they're 95% correlated. They're not co-integrated, but their price movements are typically with each other. And so when you're looking at the SPX or the S&P, you want to be looking at, you know, the other items like the bond market, etc. And can you bring that into the machine learning tool to see if you can get an edge? Because honestly, like, should surely the financial market like the SPX is actually more of a leading indicator to other assets or other stocks. So what you might want to think of is, you know, can you trade other liquid in terms of options, you know, other liquid stop, stop, stocks which have very low spreads in options where actually the S&P is the leading indicator. So these are all things that, you know, I, I just I go mad for. Like, I absolutely love this stuff, um, Jake. So I hope this was useful for you. Uh, definitely let me know if not in, in the comments. And as always, enjoy doing the video. See you on the next one.